as we open our Bibles again and study today's lesson, if you care to, you can mark your songbooks to the song that's been selected that I just deleted the number of. If you haven't already, and I'm not sure the number, so I'll get there later. But this I want us to uh, answer a question. Why church? Why church? That's uh, church is in quotation marks. Church is a, a rather broad sense of the word in some respects. But today we live in an age of technology. Technology is a wonderful thing. Um, and since COVID, uh, what we've noticed is we have noticed virtual church is a term that is uh, out there, meaning that you are not actually in church, but that you can watch church services online. Now, with all of that technology floating around now and the internet making things very viable for such things, one might wonder if there is a purpose for the church as it has existed over the centuries. I want us to open this discussion as always, allowing the Bible to be our guide. Asking the question, is it necessary to assemble together in a building such as this, or in a home, or in a particular location, together with brothers and sisters of like precious faith, to worship God? If you happen to be, and maybe maybe someone is listen, going to be listening to us on YouTube or Facebook, or one of the other avenues, but if you're one of the many people who are of the opinion that church simply doesn't, quote, do anything for you or doesn't do it for you, listen to the end of this lesson. This may be one of two parts. I don't know if I've got a second part coming or not yet. But I've been struggling with the idea. And over the years, I've noticed that people have become, from time to time, discouraged with church. Or disheartened with church. I studied with, studied with a brother one time who was struggling with this issue. And it made me realize that Different people have different needs. But one thing, one conclusion I came to is that we all need God. And we all need to serve God as God would have us to serve. So first, what is the word church? Today we might have not have a full grasp on what the uh, biblical word church is really is. Now, we might think, and, and some people might think of church as a pretty building, or a worship service, or maybe even a non-profit organization. All of those are, if you were to ask folks today, all of those are answers that you might receive. You might ask someone where they go to church at. And they might say, well, I go to the, and they might name a location of a building. You might ask someone, what time is church? And you would get an answer that we have church at 1030 on Sunday morning. Or you might look at a church and you might see an organization that is spread throughout the world and they, they do a lot of good, a lot of activities and things, but there's an organized group of people, usually of a nonprofit status, that uh, exist, and that might be your definition of church. <coughs> but what is church in the Bible? I think in order to answer whether, wh why church, in order to answer that question, we have to understand what the Bible definition of church is and what the church of the Bible looks like. The English word church comes from the Greek word ekklesia. And ekklesia is a compound word 
And the first portion of that compound word is ek. And ek in the Greek dictionary means the point from whence action proceeds. Now I find that interesting. I want you to think about this. The church, the first part of that word church means the point from which action proceeds. That, by definition, in my opinion, means that the church has to be an action. Now, maybe I'm wrong on that, but the second portion of the word is kaleo, and that means to call forth or call out. So, simply put, the church is, by definition, the called out. In Acts chapter 2, open, open your Bibles to Acts chapter 2, and I think we see this very well defined, that the church is not a building, it is not an organization as we see it today. It is not a worship service. Acts chapter 2 and verse 47 Simply, Luke simply states here, um, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to some of your translations, we'll say church, added to the church. The English Standard Version has chosen to use the word number here, but it is the word ecclesia. If you are to look in your uh, concordance, you will find that that word ecclesia, is so it would read, and the Lord added to the number of the called out day by day those who were being saved. The Lord added to the church daily, the King James Version says, those who were being saved. So people who are being called out, those who are being saved are added to this group of people. Sometimes, however, the, the word church in the New Testament sometimes does refer to a worship service or an assembly of the called out. So you may be a part of the church and you may be assembled with the church. The church is people who have been called out of the world. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, Peter says this regarding the church. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Peter is saying that the Christians make up the church. The church is made up of individual members who have been called out of the darkness of the world into the marvelous light of Christ. That is the simplest format of what the church is. But does that mean the church is important? We also need to understand that Jesus is the founder of the church. He is the head of the church. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When Jesus says, I will build my church, that gives him ownership. That gives him headship of the church. Turn with me in your Bibles to Colossians chapter 1 and in verse 18. Colossians chapter 1 and in verse 18, the Apostle Paul says here,
Paul says, and he is the head of the body, the church. So Paul, by definition here, is saying that the church is a body. It's a body of believers. With Jesus Christ as the head of the church. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. The movement part of the church had a beginning. The movement began with Jesus Christ and began with his ministry, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Paul said that he wanted to have preeminence. Paul said that Jesus wanted to be the first to experience not only death, but the first to experience resurrection from the dead. And today, the church continues with the teaching of Jesus Christ.